construction. And we'll talk about what that means in a minute. It also includes data-based decision making. No more uh, gut feels about where students belong in terms of a, of a curriculum or in a reading group. We need to make data-based decisions. We need to use something called a response to intervention model. And I'm going to go through all of these in a second. We need to focus on high quality professional development for teachers. And we need to give teachers time for professional collaboration. So what is quality core instruction? It's very important. Let's talk about how children learn oral language. What's the primary, their pr primary uh, reason that children pick up language? Through exposure, okay? It's simply through exposure. There's very little uh, direct instruction when it comes to kids acquiring language, okay? Our reading brains are not wired that way. It's not a natural process. Kids have to be taught explicit, explicitly and systematically in a scope and sequence of skills that are developmentally based. And we need to look at it from the perspective of five strands of reading, which include phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. Each need to be taught explicitly and systematically, and they have to be integrated uh, with one another. So what's phonemic awareness? Anybody know what phonemic awareness is? Allison does. What, what is it, Allison? And what, what's, what's a phoneme a sound. sound? You are so good. Uh, okay, so if you can't, how many sounds in the word cat? Three, right? K at. Now, if you're in first, starting first grade, and, and a first grader can't tell me that there are three distinct sounds in cat, it becomes very difficult to layer abstract representations, letters, on those sounds. So there's no reason, if you can't do that, there's no, re there's no reason for you to be able to associate C with K, A with A, and T with T. So we have to have phonemic awareness. That's the foundational skill to, in learning to read. What, what implication does that have for kindergarten? What do you think? What do we need to do in kindergarten? Yeah. Yeah. And we know that we know by the sixth month of kindergarten what a child should be able to do in terms of their ability to manipulate sounds. So we, we actually have to have a curriculum, a phonemic awareness curriculum that addresses that. Now there's a lot of great kindergarten teachers who do a lot of great things with rhyming and counting sounds and so forth, but a lot of it isn't, they don't understand the reason for, for it. Some do, but there's a lot, lot more teaching, a lot more thoughtful teaching that we can do in kindergarten to prepare kids to be good readers in first grade. One of the very best predictors of reading at four years old is a child's ability to rhyme, which is really a phonemic awareness skill. One of the very best predictors at the end of fifth grade is a child's ability to, uh, not fifth grade, end of kindergarten, end of five years old, is a child's ability to identify the letters of the alphabet. So we know in, in kindergarten, we have to spend a lot of time playing with language, playing with sounds, and get and understanding, recognizing letter names. And if we can get letter sounds in there too, then we're in really good shape. We also need to have a curriculum that supports explicit systematic instruction in the five strands. Too much of our reading instruction in kindergarten, first, second, and third grade is curriculum dependent instead of being teacher driven. And there's a big, big, big difference. If you have to be on page 186 on March 4th in your basal reader, we have a big problem. And that's often uh, the way it's approached in school. 
We also have to have enough time allocated during the day for literacy instruction, and 90 to 120 minutes is ideal. And when I'm talking about literacy instruction, I'm not talking just about reading. I'm talking about reading, I'm talking about spelling, and I'm talking about written language. And really important, we have to appropriately group students. We have to throw out old paradigms and think outside the box. Um, it, for example, multi-grade grouping. If you have kids who are fourth graders who are extremely weak readers, but you don't have enough students in that group, if you don't have enough fourth graders to make a reading group, there's nothing wrong with mixing them with appropriately matched third graders and creating a reading group of third and fourth graders. Conversely, if you have some really strong third grade readers who are way ahead of, and they don't form a big enough group uh, in third grade, there's nothing wrong with moving them into a fourth grade reading class. So we have to think that way, and administrators have to get out of old patterns of, of, of the way they conduct business. So okay, that's quality core instruction. That forms the base of the new literacy framework. Database decision making. Decisions about instruction, interventions, and student grouping need to be made using data from objective assessments that are given without bias. We can't rely on visceral decisions uh, when it comes to making decisions about children's reading programs. Again, I want to show you what we're using here at Groves. Okay, every uh, week we have uh, progress monitoring for fluency. Okay, and fluency really what it boils down to is the rate at which a student reads and the accuracy at which he reads. Okay, so if you're a really accurate reader but, but reading is so laborious, it's not automatic, and you're slow, um, you're expending so much mental energy and pulling the written word off the page, you don't have enough mental energy left to do what? Comprehend. Comprehend. To make meaning the, the purpose of reading. To make meaning of what you're reading. So we, we know f f on a normed basis that a child, second grade, third month, should be at the 50th percentile, should be reading X number of words a minute. So say 85 words a minute. There's actually a chart, a standardized chart, that we can look and see. So we know for every month of every grade what the fluency should be of, of a child. So what we do at Groves is determine, um, now all of our kids, especially the younger ones, first through sixth grade, are here because they have a reading problem. So we have this student whose name I took off the chart, who um, we've actually, there, there's an error in this, but. This is that child's goal line. We started, we thought that the child would um, start at about 96 words a minute. It was apparent that um, that was an incorrect. That, that goal, uh, starting, initial starting line, uh, probably should be, be down here. And you'd have a steeper goal line that you're shooting for. But be it that as it may, um, this is where she started in every week since probably the third week of school, we've given a one minute uh, fluency test. Is she going in the right direction? No, no not at all. Um, she's, she's actually going in the wrong direction. We would hope that with the right intervention that she'd be at least at the target line, if not above. So what we did at about right here, we decided that we had to put an intervention in. We said, look, we have four data points that are all well below the trend line. And the teacher looked at it, came to me and said, this is, John, this isn't good, is it? And I said, no, it doesn't look good. So what we did was bumped her into, and you'll see this in a minute on a chart, we gave her um, an additional half an hour of instruction a day, starting right about there. Did it help? Not really. She dropped again, she's up, and then she's down. This student also happens to be um, significantly attention deficit, and that plays into it a little bit too. So starting right here, uh, after last week, we decided, you know what? 
trend line is, is not where we want it to be at all. She's quite far below goal line. And um, we're starting one-on-one -on -one intervention one day a week, one, uh, once a day for uh, five days a week. That trend line then we're hoping will start to grow and if we can get her up here and stabilize it, we'll take that one-on-one -on -one intervention away and she'll go back into her regular reading group and we'll just monitor it and hope it stays above.